going to say. But then yes. my unexercised brain forgot because it wasn't, you know. Because you're not Benjamin Button. Uh, I guess. This is getting kind of obscure. <laughs> That's not that obscure, is it? Yeah, no. It's a know. fairly popular movie. It All is, right. Yeah, and also, yes. Exactly. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. Let's do a show. Here we go. The Daily Tech News Show is entirely supported and funded by voluntary contributions from listeners like you. If you want to chip in and support your daily source of tech, visit patreon.com slash acedetect. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, November 25th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, regular contributor, French podcaster extraordinaire, and it says here, Le Roi. Patrick Beja. Le Roi? As in yeah. the king? As in the king. Wow. I'm I... mostly impressed that you understood what I was trying to say. <laughs> well, honestly, you're, you're uh, improving my, uh, my official uh, title every week. And I know. I'm sort of wondering where this will lead us. I think it's, Jenny it, put I... this in the document, and I'm wondering, though, if it's a, a favor or not, because we know what they do to kings in your country. But uh, the show is uh, mostly not in my country, is it? We, we just I rebel think, against the kings here. We no, don't but chop it's, their heads it's off. a transition. It's a transition, uh, <laughs> Le Roi, because then, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to have to go higher and higher, like Emperor. Mm. And I, I'm guessing at some point, we're going to have to go to, like, Thanos and <laughs> having the Infinity Gauntlet in upgrade and things yeah. like that. So. Well, we've got a 12-year a plan for, the, for your titles. <laughs> we'll, we'll roll out later in a press conference. Meanwhile, it's time for the headlines. <laughs> Apple Insider reports Apple's deal to make Google, the default search engine in the Safari browser, both iOS and OS X, expires in early 2015. The information, uh, and I don't mean just in general, I mean the publication, the information, says representatives from Yahoo and Microsoft have already spoken with Apple's Eddie Q about taking over the slot. Bing is already the default search engine in Siri. They replaced Google in iOS 7 in 2013. That, this is a really interesting uh, discussion because, first of all, Siri is possibly replacing parts of the use we have for search engines in general. It might be assistance like this might become the next evolution in, in search. And then you have to wonder what... Uh, Apple is going to be looking for for that spot in their uh, default search engine because it can't really be about the money. It could be, but you know, Apple is not wanting for money. It might have more to do about uh, with market positions and how to influence that. It's a uh, must be interesting uh, position to be in. I think it will. F I, I really do believe this. Uh, I think it will be whatever they think is the best user experience. And if they look at it and decide, well, you know, Bing is a good user experience on Siri. We, we, can, we can go for that. They'll go for that. If they look at it and say, mm, you know what, in a browser, Google still provides the best experience, they'll stick with Google. I, unless there is a vast difference in money. I don't believe Apple's that worried about it. I think maybe the Bing switch on Siri had a little bit to do with going thermonuclear on Google about Android. And I'm starting to feel like maybe those feelings have started to fade. Mm, makes sense. PC World reports on Pew Research Center's quiz of 1,066 people who at least occasionally use the internet to find out how much they know about the web. 83% of people correctly identified a photo of Bill Gates, uh, the top correct answer. Though knowing hashtags were used in Twitter uh, was the right, I'm sorry, was right behind at 82%. The one nobody knew was the first popular graphical web interface, uh, web browser. Only 9% answered Mosaic. Next to last were the 21% of people who could correctly identify a picture of Cheryl Sandberg. We'll go to talk about our own results here yeah. on this in a bit. TechCrunch passes along an IDC report that full-year iPad shipments are expected to decline 12.7% this year as a result of a generally sluggish tablet market. While the overall market for tablets is still expected to grow 7.2%, that's a big slowdown from the 52.5% growth of a year ago. Analysts say the problem with tablets in general is people are holding on to them longer than mobile phones. Emerging markets are the bright spot for tablet makers, though. They're expected to account for 50.6% of shipments in the market this year. I guess the big uh, 
it's not that much of a surprise if you you were not being overly enthusiastic about tablets as most people including me uh, were a few years ago but the big surprise is tablets are not being uh, renewed as often as smartphones which should that be a surprise i know some people are expressing well, surprise at that but to me it makes sense a tablet i mean and maybe it's because i'm one of those people who never bought an lte connected tablet but a tablet's always felt more like a laptop or a desktop than a phone. So I'm yeah. less like, and it's less sub, it's not subsidized, right? So you're less likely to get drawn into some free phone offer uh, like you would with a phone. Uh, it just, to me, it makes sense. Like, yeah, we use tablets and my tablet is, an, is a third generation iPad uh, and I've been using it for forever. And I don't still, yeah. I don't feel the need to replace it right now. As I was saying, it, it makes sense for people who are sensible, unlike me uh, in the past. You know, It, it completely gotcha. makes sense. It's just that there was a, an overwhelming enthusiasm, I, I think, for tablets in general, well, and there was uh, a big, which is now subsiding. There was a big curve. I replaced it every year the first three years because each one was significantly better than the last one. But I, I think there's only the so much you can do with them now. Yeah, Fair enough. Recode reports that Twitter has introduced digital coupons. Twitter offers are discounts that users can claim from advertisers' tweets uh, by linking their credit or debit card with Twitter. The users uh, can then redeem the discount by paying in-store with the linked card. Advertisers will be able to measure the monetary impact of online promotions, and Twitter will make money off promoted tweets. Not to mention, have a treasure trove of registered credit cards in their database. Select retailers and food chains will start promoting their offers on Twitter today. How does that work exactly? You just record, so, because you have to click somewhere to, to signal that you want to benefit from the uh, offer, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, there, so you see a tweet that says, click here to get, you know, this great offer. And then you click there right. and it says, have you registered your credit card with Twitter? If you have, then it just goes, great, we've registered your credit card for, this, for the great offer. And if you have it, you have to get, put your credit card in. Then it'll say that. And then when you go to the store, and this is the part that always scares me because I'm like, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to call customer some more support and check. But supposedly it just automatically does it, right? You pay with the credit card and they take the discount or whatever it is that they offered. Uh, so the thing is, you're not going to see the discount in the price that's going to be print, you know, displaying on the register. So you see the full price, you put in your credit card, and it's only going to withdraw the amount of money after the offer is... Right? I wonder, no. it depends on the place. Like if it's a food chain and you go into the burger joint and you buy the burger, it may recognize the number and then take the discount right then. Uh, mm. It should, but... that would Yeah, but before you insert your credit card, it's going to display the full price. Yeah, right. You're going to have to know. And then yeah, you, exactly. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You're going to have to know like, oh, it says... $15, but I should, it should only be 12 once it's done. It's just, yeah. it's kind of weird to me. That. A little bit, a little bit. ZDNet passes along an announcement from the UN's International Telecommunications Union. You, you hear them called the ITU all the time. Uh, they made the announcement that the online population of the world has grown to more than 3 billion people. That's up 6.6% .6 in 2014. Two thirds of all people online live in the developing world. The numbers came in their annual Measuring the Information Society report, which came out yesterday, November 24th. Super interesting number. Um, I think the thing that struck me the most is, uh, try to take a look for a second at how integral the internet has become uh, in our lives. It's, it's a part of everything. It's everything we do. Now, three billion people is a lot, but more than half of the people living on Earth don't even have access to the internet at all. And that's a little bit of a shock. I mean, I know, you know, it's the same issue with electricity and, and drinkable water and all of that, but uh, for it's almost like the internet feels like, you know, we keep discussing the fact that it's a human right and all of that. And it feels like it's, it's so, we've grown so accustomed to it, it's strange to imagine that more than half of the world doesn't even have it. It's a, it's a good perspective setter. And I, I don't even think it's a, it's a negative thing at all because it's growing. Uh, and, and the more people that come online, the better. Obviously, we had lower numbers than this quite a bit 
you know, even in the '90s, uh, it was yeah. it was almost zero percent, really, when you when it was a rounding error. So the fact that we've gotten to three billion people, I think, is fantastic, and I think that should be celebrated. Sure. Uh, at the same time, you're right; it's a reminder of just how many people still like those of us who've been doing this for a long time. I think feel less shocked by this than maybe those who have gotten in in the Facebook generation and are like, oh, yeah, well, the Internet's always been around. I've kind of grown up with the Internet. And then to think, hey, there's lots of people who still have no access to the Internet. I think that's, that's a really important thing to remind people about. That's all. Gigaom reports that the BBC is working with greatfire.org to use something called collateral freedom to attempt to bypass Chinese blocks on BBC content users would be able to view the content without using a VPN or proxy. Essentially, Greatfire can direct users to BBC content hosted on CDNs like Amazon, CloudFront, or Microsoft Azure. Azure? Azure? How do you pronounce this? In Azure. English? Azure. There That's how go. I pronounce it. <laughs> this makes it harder for the content to be blocked without blocking the entire CDN, which is used by many legitimate Chinese companies. Yeah, so this is clever. Uh, I, I don't think it's totally going to work forever. I think, you know, China has an interest in blocking this content. They'll try, try different way. Uh, but it does say, hey, you know what? You're going to block the domain for Amazon's web services? Well, you're going to have all of your economy shut down if you do that well, because everybody's using Amazon and Azure and all of these places. They need to have a, a, a URL, right, for, for people to access it. And that's what Great Fire provides, is you can go to GitHub and you can get a little applet that gives you those URLs. Okay, and then, right, so it's kind of a, a, a URL translator of sorts, and then... It's really just a right. list of links, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's, it's an, interesting, uh, an interesting approach, and definitely something that uh, I'm sure a lot of Chinese people will uh, take advantage of. The next web reports Xiaomi introduced or announced its first 4G mobile device for India. It's called the Redmi Note 4G dual SIM LTE phone, 8 gigabytes of storage, 5.5 inch IPS 720p display, 3100 milliamp hour removable battery, 13 megapixel rear camera, 5 megapixel front camera. It's also a 3G version, which is essentially the same device, but with 3G instead of LTE. The Redmi Note 4G goes on sale in December at Airtel retail stores and through local flash sales on Flipkart. Registration for the first of those flash sales on Flipkart started today at 6 p.m. IST and sales for that. Uh, the way it works with Xiaomi is you register for the flash sale and then on a certain day they let you give them your money. Uh, so you can start giving them your 8,000 nine hundred ninety nine rupees on December second, and that's about one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, something seems. like that, U.S. Right? Um, yeah, it's what what's really striking me in this whole description is how high end uh, the uh, phone is, and it's for India, which is traditionally an emerging market. Uh, you know, uh, it, phones are usually a lot lower end for for these markets, so. They're, they're getting there, and uh, a lot of that is probably having to do with the uh, extended amount of people who are now having access to the internet, which is cool. Yeah, and, and it's affordable. I mean, we're talking, not talking $150 US subsidized. That's the price for this yeah. five and a half inch 720p, 13 megapixel phone. It's pretty good. I guess the CPU is probably the, the one area where it's not, and maybe the quality of the screen and things like that, but it's 72. Um, yeah, it's not top of the line. But, You're right. It's IPS. Yeah. It's not but awful, it's, but yeah, yeah, it's not it's not OLED. It's, you know, it's not the top thing out yeah. there. Ars Technica reports the U.S. Federal Trade Commission has settled with Sony Computer Entertainment and advertising uh, agency Deutsche LA over claims made in early ads for the PlayStation Vita. The complaint focused on uh, the remote play feature, which only worked on a few PS3 titles. One ad showed remote play working with the game Killzone 3, which never supported the feature. Sony will offer uh, Vita customers who bought the system before June 1st, 2012, uh, a $25 rebate or a $50 voucher for select games and services. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this is something that should probably happen. I'm wondering how the advertising agency got involved in all of this because 
surely Sony is the one responsible for okaying the 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 ad and they probably know what the technical aspects of it are is the advertising agency at fault it sounds I, a little bit strange i mean that, that that doesn't sound strange to me at all it, it they may be at fault they may not it all depends on how those agreements are signed right has nothing to do with you're talking reality <laughs> right <laughs> you're saying hey the ad agency Silly can only me. make an ad around the specs that sony told them about right whereas the contracts between sony and the ad agency may say look you guys are going to take on liability as part of this contract and we'll reduce the price or whatever, right? So that, that may just, I don't know how these, these contracts are formed. That may be a typical part of this is that the ad agency agrees to indemnify a company in part in case they say something, you know, if they stretch the truth. Because that's the other thing. If the ad agency says, hey, I think we can get away with show and kill zone here. And we know it's not exactly, but I, I think you'd have a good defense in court. Then suddenly mm -hmm. Sony's like, well, you're going to court with us. I guess I, I, in my world, in Patrick's world, uh, Sony would be the one okaying the ad before it goes live, so they would be taking on the responsibility. To me, But that's sort I of besides it's... the point, though, which is mm. whoever's responsible lied to you all and got caught. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Of course. <laughs> Uh, and finally, Hewlett Packard's fiscal fourth quarter earnings are out. They missed Wall Street estimates. They earned a dollar six per share on revenue of twenty eight point four billion. Analysts had forecast a dollar six per share on twenty eight point eight billion, and that's down more than two percent from a year ago. HP said it expects earnings in the current quarter of eighty nine to ninety three cents a share compared to the consensus view, which had been at the top end there, ninety three cents a share. Time for some news from you. These come from our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Goofball Jones let us know about the Ars Technica article that the US FCC has stopped T-Mobile from hiding their throttling speeds. Uh, T-Mobile was zero rating the speed tests so that <laughs> when you were throttled, which they, they uh, avowedly throttle you when you reach your data cap, but when you got over that data cap and you'd be like, okay, well, how much speed do I have to work with? You wouldn't be able to tell because the speed test would show you the full capacity of the network. Uh, anyway, as part of the agreement, T-Mobile will send text messages and add links to their websites to places with accurate speed tests that they will not exempt from the throttling. So you be able at least mm. to tell in part what kind of speech you're getting. I'm, I'm wondering if they weren't zero rating the speed test as a whole before even you had reached the, the limited speeds so that you wouldn't eat up your entire bandwidth uh, just doing the speed tests. But yeah. well, you've already, you're already over the cap at that point. So it doesn't, there, there's yeah, no, no point in well, exempting my point it. Is before, if, it's, if, if it would just, will exempt speed tests in general, for everything, including mainly because we didn't want you to eat up your bandwidth before you would reach the cap, because they the, the whole purpose of the speed test is, you know, anyway, never mind. Um, I'm sure, you know, listeners will understand my strange uh, remarks. Ishenko passed along the CNET report that the Bloodsport gaming system that draws real blood when you take virtual damage received a body blow yesterday when Kickstarter suspended the campaign's funding. Bloodsport did not respond to CNET inquiries and Kickstarter said their policy is not to comment on project uh, suspensions. That was uh, a little, up. I'm not shocked about this because we were yesterday with Nicole Spag kind of going, well, is that okay to have something sticking out of your arm while you're waving the controller around? I thought it was probably okay. And it did seem like they had tried to go to great lengths to do medical stuff. But they said in the CNET article, that, that we haven't heard from Kickstarter. They don't comment on that sort of thing. But the, but the guys who were doing Bloodsport said, well, maybe they're upset about the, uh, the charity aspect of it. Because you can't do charity stuff on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So you, they could have run afoul that way somehow. I don't know. Yeah, it, it does seem like an idea that's kind of cool. There is a cool thing somewhere in there, but the form they're presenting it uh, as is not quite that, I think. there's. Oh, I thought it was many... great. You didn't like it? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, having the... the it's difficult to explain. Like, you're getting blood drawn as you're playing, and also... It's a way you know, to, to popularize giving blood, which yeah, I think is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, but I'm not sure it's the best way. And, you know, you were saying you take... Uh, the, the rumble thing is happening when you take hits, but it might be when you're using a, a heavy machine gun or something like that, and all of a sudden your blood keeps going, you know, leaving your body at incredible speeds. <laughs> no, they've speed got, no. they've got a know, limiter on it. I'm, it's not going to do that. I'm being a troll. 
No, someone taking your blood as part of a violent video game. <laughs> what could ever go wrong? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Star Fury Zeta sent in the Verge article about a volunteer group of Samsung engineers developing a second generation of the company's iCAN technology, E-Y-E-C-A-N, which is designed to allow people to navigate a computer interface with their eyes. Uh, essentially, the device slots in under a computer monitor and allows the user to highlight with a look and then click with a blink. They're calling it ICANN+. Plus. It's meant specifically for users with injuries or advanced disease. Samsung does not plan to commercialize the product. They say it costs about $500 to make, and they plan to open source the design. Good Very for you, cool. Samsung. Yeah. This is really cool. Yeah. I'm guessing it's, it's an improved uh, version of a technology that already existed, right? And but It's taking yeah. ICANN. And here's what's cool. Samsung engineers said, look, we'd really like to work on this and make it useful in a medical situation. So, uh, so they, they have a quadriplegic engineer uh, that actually helped them work on it. And Samsung said, go for it. You're exempted from any other responsibilities. Focus on this, and we won't punish you for for that, you know. And and we're not even going to commercialize it. We're going to turn it over to the medical community. Uh, it's really really an amazing thing. It's, as The Verge said in one of their headlines, or maybe it was a different outlet. I can't remember. It's the nicest thing Samsung has ever done. <laughs> and that is a look at the headlines. If you, you you were expecting me to comment more on this, but I thought maybe you'd disagree or. As I maybe think that was a backhanded that. comment. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think it was maybe meant to be a backhanded comment. I don't know. Anyway, I, I think it's an amazing thing that Samsung did that. So let's talk about Pew Research's uh, survey to determine web IQ. What internet users know about technology in the web is the name of the report. They had 17 questions on a range of issues. Now, if you took the quiz, a lot of people took the quiz today. I posted it up on Twitter. You didn't get all 17. And you got them in different order. Uh, but they were able to, over the 1,066 people they surveyed, which, by the way, you had to be above 18, and you had to at least use the Internet occasionally. They weren't out there sur surveying people who'd never used the Internet. They were also only surveying in the United States. I saw a couple of people complaining, like, why would I know a U.S. university? Well, they're asking where Facebook was first uh, founded and if you saw the social network which premiered worldwide you might know the university but even then they weren't they were only surveying the u.s so they didn't worry about stuff like that people were really good at knowing what twitter does hashtags they even knew megabyte versus kilobyte pretty well they knew what url st stood for nobody well not nobody but very few people understood that the internet and the World Wide web were not the same thing uh, they could not recognize Sheryl Sandberg's picture, which frankly I thought was probably one of the worst Sheryl Sandberg pictures they could have found. She's like halfway turned away. The, the Bill Gates picture was like straight on, but anyway. They also didn't know Mosaic. And that made me very sad. Only 9% of the people uh, answered that Mosaic was the first popular browser. I think popular threw people up off. Because I think what Pew was saying was, what was the f first browser could mean the one that Tim Berners-Lee made experimentally when he invented the web and was testing it. That's not what we mean. We mean the first popular widespread one. But Mosaic was not nearly as popular as Netscape. Although, when it was first launched, it was the way everybody accessed well, yeah, the web. Well, yeah, it was the only one. So Well, that and Lynx. That was it. Mm. Oh, uh, was Lynx available at the same time as Mosaic? I don't remember because... when Lynx actually started, but it came mm. along fairly sh soon after. Because Mosaic... I've was developed by Mark Andreessen at the University of Illinois, go Illini, and then he started the Mosaic Company, which was where Netscape came out of. Exactly. I, I remember Mosaic very clearly because that's the way I accessed the internet for the first time in 1993. 1993. Can you, I'm just going to... That's the way you accessed the internet for the first time? No, I mean the, the World Wide Web. See, and I did did you, you got that, that question, question right. I no, know. I did get it right. I did not, however, get right Moore's Laws. Yeah, question. Link started in 1992, so it was oh. around. Yeah. All right, all right. 
Uh, yeah, the Moore's Law uh, question, I did not get right because I thought there was a trick there because the article was mentioning it and I was like, wait, but isn't it related to the price? I thought there was something about like, the, 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 it wasn't just about power. I knew it wasn't about, you know, computer power doubles every uh, 18 months, which is, it's, of, it's often referred to as the, the, the power. Uh, I thought it was about the, the, the component's price and thus, you know, the power or uh, well, a size And changes. here's the thing, right? And <sighs> they had two different questions that I thought varied in their particularness. I almost got the Twitter 140 character question wrong because I overthought it. I was like, well, it used to be 140 characters, but they actually exempt URLs now. And sometimes they exempt, you know, certain other things that they, you know, they allow those information cards. So it's not strictly 140, but I went ahead and said yes, because I'm like, but I'm guessing that's the answer they're looking for. Then I got to Moore's Law and I had the reverse thought, which was like, well, this is the actual definition. The transistor definition is how it started, but people use it more loosely now to refer to a general doubling of power, even if that's not the root of it. That wasn't actually Gordon Moore's actual determination in his paper. But I was like, oh, you know what? In this case, I really think they're going after the technical definition. So I got that one right. But again, both those cases... I could have easily got them wrong by overthinking, and it was my test-taking skills that ended up <laughs> having me get them right. So, so do, can, do, can, do you want to guess which is the other one I got wrong? I got two wrong, to my great shame and uh, uh, ever-going... Well, well, you, you yeah. got the, uh, the Gordon Moore, you got the Moore's Law one wrong. So yes. my guess would be the mosaic one, but you already said that you used mosaic, so you knew mm -hmm. that one. The next, the next, I'm just looking at the list of of how many. Right. The next percentage is Cheryl Sandberg. Uh, no, I got Cheryl Sandberg right a, a little bit by elimination. I thought, no, that's not her. That's not her. All right, then, right. Uh, then going up from and the bottom, you already said you got internet and World Wide Web. You you already mentioned Moore's Law. You know when the first iPhone came out, right? You didn't get that oh, one yeah. wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know, I know. Uh, first university on Facebook. You didn't know that one. There you go. And that I have a problem with the nationality bias of this ah. test. It is unacceptable. Yeah, no. I was I I can't remember what I said. Probably um I said Stanford. And I That felt I'm, like a trick question too because I'm like, yeah. well, the first university was Harvard because that's where he started it at Harvard. But it wasn't like they put <laughs> the university on Facebook. Facebook was Harvard at that point. Yeah. But I'm like, well, all these others are definitely wrong, so I'm going to put that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's a fu it's a fun quiz. I wonder about its significance. Although a few of the findings are really, I, I think, surprising. Again, like I would expect everyone in the world to know what Bill Gates looks like, um, and almost I mean, everyone in the world does. Eighty three percent. I mean, you know, it's not a hundred percent, but it's pretty high. Yeah, it is pretty high. Do you know, who, do you know what 10% be... of the the wrong answers were? I mean, not 10% of the wrong Steve answers, Jobs. but 10% of the answers were Steve Jobs. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know it's one of those guys. <laughs> I wonder if they had uh, put a picture of Steve Jobs there, if the percentage would have been higher. I'm guessing that's, it would have. Yeah, that's curious. I'd, be, I'd wonder to know that too. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I honestly think this showed a fairly sophisticated yeah. uh, level of knowledge. I mean, people do much worse on information that is supposedly more widely available like who is the president of the united states right they do worse yes okay. uh or, or where is missouri uh so you well, know that i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to answer either somewhere this, this is actually there. pretty good i have to say i think there's a okay. selection bias though because they want people who use the internet occasionally and i think they're just generally is going are going to be people are going to be a little savvier about a, a, a technology if they use the internet occasionally these days, even even now, uh, even though it's more widespread. Sure, yeah, I mean, but that's their that's their what they're studying amongst people who use the internet occasionally. So it's not you know, um, the the thing that bothers me a little bit about the uh, Steve Jobs and and uh, Bill Gates thing, like they people can't recognize them is the fact that these are the most important, you know, uh, uh, industry builders in our time. And I would be really annoyed by all of this, but when you're telling me that people don't know who the president of the U.S. is, I sort of get a little bit of uh, um, 
yeah, I, I, more understanding in of the uh, entire American population. Oh, education. stop. <laughs> well, okay, okay. Who the president is? If there's one thing you should know, no? Do I'm I? just saying, I, you're, you're acting as if I said they survey people and ask them who the president is and nobody gets it right. I just mean, <laughs> you would think that should be 99.9%, and it's okay. never that high. So Fair there's enough. just this general, like, people sometimes just overthinking or just not generally being aware of what's going on in the world. <laughs> uh, and I think this is pretty good. If you look at the ones that are below 50%, Privacy policy means company keeps user info confidential. People just weren't paying attention to that question. They're like, oh, yeah, that yeah. privacy policy tells me about what they keep confidential. That's not what it asked. It asked, does privacy policy mean the company keeps user info confidential? Because the privacy policy might say, we don't keep any user information confidential. So I think that was definitely a trick question. Uh, then there's the university on Facebook, which you know people who haven't seen the social network probably don't know. Uh, I probably would have got the iPhone year wrong if I hadn't been thinking about this for tech history today recently. But I can never remember when Sword and Laser launched, much, much less always keep these years in my head. Mm. So that one doesn't surprise me. The Moore's Law tripped you up, and I think it probably trips others. The one that really, the only one on here that really disappoints me is, are the internet and the World Wide Web the same? And I'm not surprised because that's people use it interchangeably all the time. But it's, it is unfortunate that we have not made it clear, especially when people are trying to discuss net neutrality and things like that, that the internet and the web, what the web needs the internet to run, you know, you can have an intra-web and not need the internet to run, I guess. Uh, but the internet is not the web. They're not the same thing. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I, I was going to say the Sheryl Sandberg question was the one that chagrined me a little bit because mm. I wish, you know, um, women, uh, prominent women in tech were a little bit more well known. I'm guessing if Marissa Meyer had been the focus of that question. Yeah, it Marissa Meyer is more, more, I mean, who's equivalent to Bill prominent. Gates? That's one of the problems with the industry yeah. is there isn't one. But she or Meg Whitman, who are both alternate answers, I mm. think are more prominently covered by the general media. But Sheryl Sandberg is important. Yeah. So And she did write a book. Mm -hmm. So And maybe that that's what they were thinking is with the book out there, maybe yeah. more people would be familiar with her that way. But, uh, but yeah, certainly the internet and uh, World Wide Web uh, being different things is the one that is the most... If we take this as a uh, kind, if there, is there a message uh, in there that we should address, maybe that's something we should pay a little bit more attention to and, and explain to people more that these are not the same things. Your email, although most people use webmail now, but your email yeah. is not the web and uh, is not, you know, uh, equivalent. So... Maybe there's something to uh, to keep uh, to to pay attention to there. So uh, go check it yourself. PewInternet.org/quiz/web-iq-quiz if you want to try it out. Our pick of the day. Uh, I'm going to pick one. I've got a couple of emails still, but uh, send us your picks. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com because we need your picks. My pick's going to be Crash Plan. I've mentioned it before. It's the way I keep backed up. Uh, it just works flawlessly in the background for me. I can do backups locally for free, but I actually pay for the cloud backup as well because I find it uh, really reliable, very useful. Uh, go to code-42.com slash crash plan if you want to try it out yourself. Uh, you can get a free trial there. They're not a sponsor. It's just something I use. So check it out. Um, do you do you use any of have you used any of the other services like Carbonite or Backblaze? I yeah, I've called? used I used Carbonite, I used Jungle Disk, uh, I used another one that I can't recall now in the past. Backblaze, maybe? No, it wasn't Backblaze. Backblaze. It was before okay. Backblaze. And and so you, you this is the one you you would recommend. This is the one that uh, works for me. Okay. So like I've of all of those, this is the one that I never have to think about. It it is it is always uh, backed up. It keeps me up to date on how well it's doing with the backup. The incremental backup never fails. Uh, I can pause it when I'm doing things like podcasting, et cetera. And, and it's got a nice little selection box there for, you know, one hour, two hours, however, however long you need. And then it automatically starts backing up again. Um, mm. I, I like it is all I'm saying. Okay. Why do you ask? Oh, because I'm actually using Carbonite and I've ah, been using it for a long time. Which is another good um, one. Yeah, yeah, no, it's excellent. Uh, it just feels like the UI is a tiny little bit outdated. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if there isn't something a little bit better out there. It, there's also an issue, a weird 
issue which I'm having with Carbonite now, which it locks files uh, and I can't delete them for just, you know, 10, min 10 minutes or so. Oh, and it has never done that in the past. So maybe it's a, a passing bug. But yeah, no, I'm just, you know, keeping my options up open. I'm very happy with Carbonite now. Just wondering. There you go. couple picks. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Uh, and all my picks are at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. All right, a couple messages of the day. First one comes from someone in Atlanta. Nicole Spag and I were joking yesterday, like, maybe we should start a music service and see if T-Mobile will zero rate us for their subscribers. And then we're like, ah, but we probably can't afford the fees. This guy has an idea. Hey, Tom, I heard your discussion with uh, Nicole Spagnola and uh, about the T-Mobile um, giving free bandwidth to streaming music services. And you said, yeah, we'd have to pay for rights if we did this for... For ourselves or what have you. Um, how about using uh, uh, Creative Commons or uh, you know sort of uh, free music that's out there that anybody can use uh, without having to pay for it? That way you get around the licensing fees. And if you are streaming this content, you are able to claim that you are a music streamer, and then maybe every once in a while you do some new stuff. So <laughs> I. I think he solved a problem that we didn't seriously have, but it's a cool idea, right? I, w I wonder if somebody would do that because we were just joking around, right? But yeah, what if uh, somebody's like, okay, I'm going to do a Creative Commons feed, all pod safe music. I, you know, I've got the rights to stream it. Come, come on, T-Mobile, <laughs> take on the man. Uh, my, my solution was going to be that uh, I sing on the show um, every once in a while, but apparently, you know, th there's no need for that anymore because. Um, Someone else has another solution, so there yeah, you go. Well, yeah, well, better late than never. <laughs> VJ wrote in and said, I had an equally ludicrous idea when I was listening to your section about the Bloodsport game controller. Just as the donators can donate when they get hit slash wounded slash fragged, the recipients of blood <laughs> could receive blood transfusions while playing a vampire-themed game. <laughs> Why not? Mm. Um you know, I'm not sure what that achieves in terms of um, <laughs> usually uh, awareness transfusions or... are time sensitive, and you don't want to slow down the uh, the the blood on its way in. Otherwise, I'd be all for it. It'd yeah, be like a know, fun it's, thing it's, for kids. But I'm sure I'm sure getting blood uh, as a recipient is really tedious and boring when you do it, uh, uh, you know, on a regular basis or. Um, yeah, I don't know that anyone does it on a regular basis. Yeah, I don't know either. Do. But you know yeah. what? If you didn't actually tie it to the flow, because that's the thing. On the, on the recipient side, you don't want to slow down the flow. Uh, but let's say you were getting a transfusion and you were conscious and you were bored, you know. <laughs> you give, give them a video game to play. I think that's a great right. idea. That just, just, just start giving 3DSs to people yeah. in, in waiting. Yeah, they might that, already do that. I don't know. <laughs> Well, that is it for this episode of the Daily Tech News Show. Uh, Patrick Beja, you and I were like, oh, we'll have a lighter day. You know, the news is a little lighter. We'll just talk about the Pew Internet Project. And we went longer than usual. So I guess we had a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, something that generated surprising amounts of discussion. Um, and if you want surprising amounts of discussion in another topic, uh, you could go listen to a show that is incredibly dear to my heart uh, that uh, I relaunched this week and uh, Tom was actually on that show and he has been in the show before. The show is The Phileas Club. It's a, a, a monthly meeting of people from different backgrounds and countries and locations like literally this time we had Tom in the US, me in uh, Europe, uh, Eric in, in uh, I almost said China, in Vietnam it was and close, Paolo. Close to China. Yeah. And Paolo in South Africa. And what we did was we discussed uh, the world news, the current affairs from the past month or so. Uh, so the point of the show is to get you uh, uh, different uh, opinions, views, angles on stories that have a lot of similar narratives in our existing you know countries and the west in general uh it's really an, and it's fun that's something important as well it's a really fun show so if you want to give it a try and i encourage you to do so uh, you can go to frenchspin.com and you will find the show there it's called the Phileas club definitely check it out it's one of my favorite things that ever Thank existed you. in podcasting so <laughs> i'm glad it's back 
Uh, thank you to our patrons as well, 4,577 of you. Uh, we appreciate every single one of you, no matter how much you give. We appreciate everybody in the audience, even if they can't give, because we know everybody can't. But if you can, and you get some value out of the show and you think it's worth it, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. Uh, and you can find all the different ways to support the show. There's the Patreon, uh, there's PayPal donations, Dogecoin, merchandise. In fact, uh, we just launched our store. Now, this may be a way to support if you're like, I can't give on an ongoing basis, but I'd buy a t-shirt. You can do that here. Or I know some people have like, let me know when you have coffee mugs. We've got coffee mugs now. Uh, we also have mouse pad in there and a mobile charger at dtns.bigcartel.com. David Michael already started a sale for us. Uh, that starts midnight Friday morning, so 12.01 a.m. on Friday, and goes until midnight Friday night. Write this code down so you can use it then. DTNS BF 2014 gets you 10% off the total order. Um, you said Friday night. Uh, it's Monday night that it ends, right? Mon no, I said Friday morning, 12.01 a.m., yes. until, until Monday night. Did I say Friday right. night the second time yes, too? Yeah. Friday morning until Friday night. No, it's not a one-day sale. Uh, Friday morning, 12.01 a.m. till Monday night at midnight. Thank you for catching that. Uh, tomorrow is an early show as well, so it'll show up early in your feed if you're an on-demand listener. If you like watching live, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific is when it will be. So hopefully you get some coffee if you're on the Pacific Coast or a sandwich if you're on the East Coast uh, or maybe a pint if you're somewhere otherwise in the world. Don't forget you can have a voice in what stories we cover at our website subreddit dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com our email address feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com our phone number 51259daily and the show's live at mobile.alphageekradio.com our website is dailytechnewsshow.com again back tomorrow at 9 a.m. with Justin Robert Young talk to you then this podcast is part of the Frog Pants Studios Network for more information about this and other shows visit frogpants.com Audio program so good, it's like you're there. Hey, woohoo! Oh, there's no Jenny. Maybe Jenny can rejoin now, and you can hear her horrible bandwidth. Uh, Tinvec, I'm not sure what Phileas Lander is. The connection. Well, Phileas oh, is he trying to play on the Phila Lander? Make it. Oh, right, right. That. I'm wondering okay. if that's what he's. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Did you just like <laughs> mock laughing? Audio so good. Uh, caller, can you turn down your radio, please? <laughs> <laughs> Jenny's here. Yay. That's how delayed it oh, is. No Jenny. Maybe Jenny can rejoin now and you can hear her. Horrible I can thing. hear me saying that. <laughs> Uh, your your uh, your audio sounds better than it did before the show, so something helped. Something happened. I think you're fixed. I like that she was already rejoining even before the actual request for her to join showed up on the. She was she was on it. It was playing in like three different windows. I was like, where, what, where, what? <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, it, well, it's the delay. So like, I tried to time it. So that I wasn't jumping in during the show. Well, no, that's what I mean. Is like yeah. you weren't responding to me saying, let's get Jenny back. You were already on your way. Long oh, I was listening I said. the whole time. Yeah. I'm devastated to be booted out of the thing by apparently a solar storm because now everything seems to be fine. <laughs> that's so weird. So you're back on your home connection, right? Yeah, back on my home connection. It was just one of those things. Like nobody yeah. uploads or downloads in this house except me. Right, so right. Nothing well, else that, going on. God, it's uh, the behavior is so like something was happening. Maybe something on the the wider node that you're on yeah. was, was eating up the bandwidth. Bizarre. Hi, Patrick. Tweet, streets. Hey, Jenny. I never even got to say hi. That well, actually, we uh, we did say hi, but you just didn't hear it. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Uh, well, it was a very good show. And to uh, Pew, I only say this. You write bad questions, dudes. Because that Twitter question got me, and I know how many Twitter... You know, like, it got me. Uh, Can I pretend really? to be Pew? Yeah. Oh, so you're a professional survey taker like we are? Yep. Yep, I am. Oh, so I you're you're am. trained and you, you have uh, decades of experience in survey question creation? You know, it's funny, I do. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't have as much experience as Pew. But I, I also agree that that question is suspect. And there were several questions that were really, like, it was so bad at one point, it was kind of like Pew had a terrible internet IQ because of the way they were writing the questions. <laughs> My, the, 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 the one I, be a little bit harsh. The one, yeah. The one I took the most issue with uh, was, 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 is probably the Sheryl Sandberg one. Because picture. it's just not a picture that looks like Sheryl Sandberg. I got it right because I knew it wasn't any of the other three. And I'm like, I guess that's Cheryl. Yeah. You know? And it's really tiny and low res and she's turned half away from the camera. I'm like, yeah, okay, I think that's Cheryl. But it wasn't like the Bill Gates one where you're like, oh, well, that's obviously Bill Gates. It's like, I know. I, I, I was mad at that one. I was mad. I, 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 the only one that I missed that I accept missing was Mosaic Netflix. Like, I mean, Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. That's how far we've come. Because really, it, that's a sub, like, that, there's a correct answer to that question, but really whatever graphical interface browser you used first is the only one you remember. Well, and that question I think is fair because it's testing yeah. the depth and and length of your knowledge. Yeah, it's saying, totally okay, where's the line between people who remember that far back mm -hmm. and can go, oh yeah, mosaic. And that's that's not a negative to people yeah. get it wrong. It's just it's like saying like how many people remember the number one record of nineteen forty two, right? Right. None of us. But that's only because we're not from there. Whereas somebody who's older might go, Oh, well, yeah, I bet I bet it's probably this, right? Yeah. Oh, so that Twitter question was bad. Sorry. The one forty character? Yeah. Yep. I almost got it wrong. And I still think it's not as bad as some of the others. No, some of the others were written really poorly. And it is 140 bad. characters. That is right. I feel like I was just overthinking it. Yeah, but but you're supposed to overthink it when you work at the internet. Yeah, but <laughs> like, this is the just serving the, act, the, 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 the people, not the people who work. Yeah. I don't know. I agree with you. Uh, I'm <laughs> going to go. Ha. Bye, Patrick. And bid you all a fond farewell. Uh, in pure internet hangout fashion. By just hanging up and leaving? Bye. <laughs> yes. What? I said thanks. Oh, because you muted yourself. And I, oh, because I, I was you typing. playing a trick on me. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, I forgot to change the track number yesterday. Sorry, ID3 tag readers. Although I did, uh, one guy who uh, tends to start the show on YouTube, but then sometimes finish or carry on with other shows on the podcast, asked if I could put the episode number in the YouTube title, which I explained to him why I hadn't been, and then said, yeah, but I guess I can. So I did that today. We'll find out how many people are now going to complain that there is a number there in that title and it pushes it off the page for them. And could I please remove that number? Which is usually what happens. That's called A-B testing in slow motion. Yep. So when you say, when you say you're a survey professional, what, what kind of stuff did you, did you do? Um, I wrote a survey for an organization that I work for uh, asking people about how they feel about the daily tech news Oh, show. you're talking about DTNS. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a long time with that survey making sure you it was did. Clear, you did. And oh, that's practical. fair. You deserve it. And, and also, I did work for CBS News, and we thought a lot about survey questions, even though we were sort of like, there was a whole separate survey unit full of people who knew what the heck they were doing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But that yeah. trickled down enough so that, like, the basic, like, the writing of a fair accurate, concise survey question is something that we thought about quite a bit. And here's the thing. Pew Research is that division of CBS that you're talking about on steroids. Yeah. So they thought about every one of these questions very hard. And I bet if you corner any of them, they have very good and detailed reasons why they phrased the question the way they did. I would love to hear them because yeah. some of them I'm like, really? Like, yeah. I don't know, maybe they're like, yeah, we wanted to make it confusing because yeah. that has testable, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. I don't know. But you know what the simple answer is? They, they let the intern do the internet. Survey. No, I don't believe that. I know that's the, the joke answer, but I don't believe that. Pew Research has a very long pedigree of good behavior. I would be, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'd be very surprised if that ended up. I don't know. I'm just saying it could have. 
That's the thing okay, trolls well, and armchair quarterbacks are just going to throw out about, there at everybody, right? How about this? I wish it had been multiple choice. It was multiple choice. True, false. Most of them were multiple choice. No, mine were true, false. Well, then uh, this is them, interesting. I had one true, false, and the rest were all multiple choice. My Twitter one was true, false. Yeah, that one was true, false, because it's a yes, right. no question. Yeah. Well, it clearly isn't. I don't know. I still think that one I'm just overthinking on. Uh, hold on. I'm writing back QNX Monkey who said our survey is too long, and I'm writing him back. Only answer the questions you want. Um, let's see. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, no, TVZ Gun, they're not jerks. Pew is like an amazing organization, and I love them. And it's my purely competitive quiz test taking thing that was like I had a 90, and I was like super psyched with having like a 90 percent or 95. I would have gotten a 95 percent correct, and like something that I overthought tripped me up, and I got. A and believe and believe me, it was like I said in the show, it was only my test taking skills that saved me. Yeah. It was me thinking about the nature of the questions and how they write them. Yeah. Maybe there's somebody who works at Pew out there who can answer this. Come back, Pew. Maybe Pew D. Pew can uh, answer these questions. What the hell is going on? What's going on? Veronica Belmont is blowing up my, my text messages. Well, she's also blowing up Twitter with things about... Oh, because I haven't ordered the custard from the Giants winning the National League Championship Series. <laughs> so she decides to pick a Twitter fight with me in the middle of Daily Tech News show. show. There's a lot of respect there. A lot of respect for your process. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> nicely done, Belmont. Way to go, Belmont. I do, you know what? I do have to do that. She's she's not wrong that I haven't <laughs> paid my bet yet. She's uh, also very internet smart because although you may not be paying attention, everyone is paying attention to you during your show. So that is an ideal time to start a Twitter fight. Yeah, I think they should... Um, I think Ted Drew's frozen custard should just send me send Veronica some custard on my behalf. I'll pay him back. It's not through lack of desire. Do it, please. <laughs> Can I use my internet powers that way? Yeah. Dear Ted Drews, please send free custard to Veronica Belmont. I'll pay you back. <laughs> Veronica's house is gonna get buried in custard. <laughs> Everyone send Veronica custard right now. <laughs> frozen custard from everywhere. <laughs> It's going to be like a night at the opera. They're going to open the door and just custard's just going to fall in. Well, it's supposed to be frozen custard, but whatever. Whatever you've got, just send it. <laughs> oh, man. This is the start of something terrible. Please. <laughs> I implore you, chat realm. Help me in my time of need. Uh, <laughs> Ted oh, Drew's frozen custard. It's on Chippewa in South St. Louis. Someone help me. Nice. Get it to Veronica Belmont. Stat. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> She's on the internet. <laughs> I wish I could tweet someone custard. I'd be, be done with this. Right, you'd be done. Um. I did the sorted laser lineup this morning instead of ordering you frozen custard. <laughs> oh, how about that? I don't think that's going to work. No. All right. I got my notes all day. <laughs> 40 Thieves says I should start a Kickstarter to send custard. To <laughs> I don't, is that the money that I need? It's the time to call the place because they'll do it. They'll send it out of state. They'll pack it in carbon, carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. frozen, frozen ice, dry ice. That's what the word is. They'll pack it in dry ice. They'll send it. They'll do it. I just have to call them, and I don't. I don't work on the phones. I don't. That's not. That's not how I live. It's very difficult. 
Yeah. You know, I don't pay any doctor bills that don't allow me to pay them online. Like, I just realized, like, I will just let them rot. If they don't have online payment by now, they're, we're done. Like, come on. Do the collection agencies uh, go for that? I'm curious. Uh, no. But they <laughs> usually, they like, the doctor's office will call you, and then I'm like, here you go, here's my hand over the phone. But oh, I got you. I will not mail, I will not send a stamp in the U.S. mail at this point when, like, Look, dude, if you don't want to set up a system yourself, that's fine. But there are plenty of places that will contract with you to, like, take online pay. Um, so, yeah. This is where the custard is supposed, frozen custard is supposed to come for, from. Ask not for whom the custard tolls. It tolls for Veronica Belmont. Ted Drews, T-E-D-D-R-E-W-E-S. That looks delicious. It is delicious. My mom was raised on that stuff. What were you going to get? Uh, if I was going to get one of the San Francisco ice cream places. I don't remember. Like yeah. One of the, one of the old, old yeah, timey ones. Kids. It's really good. I can't remember the name. It's now I'm blanking on the name. Oh, it's the one my mom used to go to up at. What was the name of that place? Uh... Starts with a B. I want to say Bluebell, but it's not Bluebell. No, it's um, <sighs> Berkeley. Hold on, it's Google. B. Google is being replaced. <laughs> was it? It's not Fenton's. No, I, Fenton's is in Oakland. I used to live right near Fenton's. Yeah. Fenton's is fantastic. Fenton's yeah. is the one that they referenced in Up. But no, it was not Fenton's. Because Fenton's isn't San Francisco. Fenton's is Oakland. Yeah, Fenton's, uh, that's where my mom used to go. Fenton's, Fenton's Creamery. Yep. Delicious. Let's see. Uh, I wore the hat. I already paid <laughs> that part. Where's, where's the thing? <sighs> Humphrey Slocum. That's what I said. Did you? I thought you said Fenton's. No, before that, I said Humphrey Slocum, and you said, no, no, one of the old ones. And Humphrey Slocum is like one of the first. I didn't hear you say Humphrey Slocum. Yeah. Or I heard you say Humphrey Slocum and didn't recognize the name. Yeah. That's Okay. Nobody recognized do we need, do we need to go back and check the tapes again? Yeah, I said Humphrey Slocum. <laughs> Chat room, back me up. Although I will say I'm operating an incredibly low bandwidth, so I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't hear it. All right. As after a piece of um, But I anyway, I'm not getting Humphrey Slocum them. now because I, I lost. So you I know I was right. You said what? Not only did I say Humphrey Slocum the first time, I then followed it up with Secret Breakfast, which is their... Uh, no. I didn't hear any of that. Yeah. Must be I'm bad. an old man, Jenny. You gotta <laughs> talk slow. You kids going a mile a minute. Packets. Can't follow all that. Past your head. Packets, packets, packets. <laughs> <laughs> also, sometimes I realize I speak, but if you speak, then it cuts off. Yeah. I may say it, and it may never reach your ears because Google has decided that you are to be heard, which is fine. It happens the other way, too, sometimes. So I sure. think there, there is communication issues there as well. For Look truth. at that, solving problems like grown-ups. What? What? <laughs> and then reacting to the solving of those problems like that. Yeah. All right, I'm out of the post. All right, allow me to join the post. Here I and go. And I'm gonna check this before I turn it off. Why isn't the uh, whoa, whoa, whoa? Hold on. Hold on. Hold the fort. Did you go into the post already? I did. You want me to leave? Uh. I could publish right at the second. No, go ahead and publish. Yeah. I'm gonna update and then I'm leaving. I just forgot to put something in. That's all. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Um, out. Um, I'm out of the post. <laughs> oh, wow. Turnabout is fair play. I like them apples, Merit. I like apples okay. <laughs> They're not my favorite. That's 
fine. Okay. All right. It hurt uh, my teeth. Oh no! Instead of a compliment compliment bomb, there's going to be a custard bomb. <laughs> that could a only frozen end. custard bomb. That could hurt. So poorly. <laughs> okay, and that is it. All right, everyone, send custard. We'll talk to you later.